explaining the content of the slides. So let me just share the content first. Okay. Dr. Sharul, dapat nampak eh slide saya, Dr. Sharul? Dah appear. Ah, okay, thanks. All right. Okay. Okay, without further ado, um, the first slot for our session today is going to be on abstract writing. Um, for those who have not known me, my name is Dr. Manis Tapa, and I am on the abstract uh, verification and approval panel from Language Academy uh, FSSH. Um, Hello, siapa yang familiar with this? Um, uh, mungkin pelajar-pelajar akan uh, juga. Maybe you know that um, the lecturers from the Language Academy are also the lecturers who are teaching the TESOL. Um, that means uh, all the TESOL subjects are being taught by the lecturers from Language Academy, and of course, uh, we are all uh, belong to the same faculty. Um, let's look at the first slide. Um, this is just a, a, a quick definition of what uh, abstract is. Um, so everybody knows uh, what uh, a, a simple definition is. Definition yang amat uh, simple. Uh, An abstract is a very concise statement. So concise, I'm sure uh, um, everybody knows concise uh, mean. It means a brief but comprehensive. Kenapa dia brief? Because dia tak panjang and it appears if you notice here, uh, the uh, beginning of your thesis or beginning of a research article. Uh, it has to be concise uh, in the sense that walaupun dia pendek, even though it's brief, it has to be comprehensive. It contains all the important um, information that is included in your paper or this is a concise statement of the major elements of your research project. It basically states the purpose, methods, findings of your research project. Purpose, method, findings. Uh, later on, uh, we are going to look at in detail what this means. An uh, abstract is a condensed, of course, yeah, concise, condensed version of a full scientific paper. If you are talking about um, writing a paper, because later on Dr. Fendi will be talking about how to turn your thesis or your FYP into a research article. So then uh, uh, it goes both ways. So the abstract that we are going to talk about today would be for thesis as well as for your um, paper, uh, research paper. Length, okay, length is important because we cannot write an abstract that is too long. Abstract tak boleh panjang. Okay. So uh, for, for general articles, normally the abstract would be between 150 and 250 words only. But slightly longer for thesis, between 200 to 350 words. Uh, why we have a longer abstract for thesis? Definitely, yeah, because your thesis will be longer. Even for your FYP, maybe you will write, like I do not know, 60, 70 pages. Uh, as you go and uh, uh, along and you write your master's thesis or your PhD thesis, they become longer. And of course, you have more words to write. But basically, this is a general um, acceptance a number of words, 150 to 250 for your general articles and between 200 to 350 words for your um, thesis. Definitely, I, I think everybody knows this, should be only on one page. Tetapi, you might, uh, you know, like sometimes we do get, when we are proofreading abstract, we do get abstract that is more than one page, which is definitely wrong. It has to be only on one page. Layout, usually one single paragraph. Definitely one single paragraph. Font size is different from the main text, especially for research article, but not the thesis. The thesis, the font will remain the same. But when you are submitting an article for publication, then the font normally is different from the main text. Position, usually at the beginning of the thesis or your research paper, but it can also appear elsewhere. For example, in a book of abstracts or online uh, abstracts, which is not that important, but I'm just giving you a general introduction of, of abstracts. Okay. Um, Abstracts, <clears throat> we should know this as well. Abstracts are not substitutes for the article and should not be cited as references. This is important. Okay. When you read abstract, you cannot cite that abstract 
as your in-text citation or reference. You can only cite the whole article. Sometimes um, um, we might, you know, read just the abstract and then we put that as reference, which is academically not right. Um, abstract is not a summary of the entire article. It's not a summary. It should present only main finding. Later on, we will go into detail what are the uh, um, elements that you should include in your um, abstract. Okay. Abstract do not contain enough information for a critical evaluation of the research. If you are tasked or if you are asked to write a critical evaluation of a paper, then you cannot depend only on the abstract. You need to read the whole uh, paper. Characteristics of an abstract. Accurate. It has to be accurate. It has to be accurate relation with the content of your thesis. It needs to be coherent. Coherent uh, meaning it has to form as a whole, meaning when we read the, the abstract, we should be able to understand what it is about. So coherent uh, also um, um, is related to logical. It has to be logical and uh, readable. Okay, meaning when we when, when when people read our abstract, they will be able to understand the content uh, 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 of our of uh, of our thesis. Concise, brief, okay, specific. Um, it, it has to be clearly stated, clearly defined in relation to our own thesis. And selective. Uh, selective means uh, there are only certain things that should be included in the thesis. And you have to be able to select. You need to select the right elements to be put in your in your thesis. Self-contained. What does it mean? It stands alone. No references. Sometimes you get references in the uh, abstract, which is wrong. Okay. Uh, no tables. No figures. Purpose of abstract to introduce your thesis or your general articles. Okay, because I'm sure um, uh, when you want to read thesis or general articles for academic purposes for your assignment or whether you want to cite other people's work uh, in your thesis, then with, before you read the whole article or before you read the whole thesis, then you read the abstract first. Why? To determine whether the article is suitable for, for you to be cited or to be read later. So abstract would be the determining factor to, for you to decide whether to continue reading or to stop um, a reading. Because sometimes if you read the title, the title could be a bit misleading. So you read the abstract and then you can decide whether yes, I will continue reading or no, this is not suitable for me. And then you stop reading. So you don't have to waste time reading the whole article when you can just read the abstract. Inform readers about the content, definitely. If they are interested in your thesis, yes, they read the abstract and they will straight away know what is the content of your, of your thesis. Help readers to decide whether or not to read. This one I covered earlier, yeah? Okay. Um, of course, if we are into attending conferences, Dr. Shahru probably would know this as well. Uh, it, it, it gives an overview of uh, conference programs, abstract collections, and also book uh, chapters. Why should I know how to write abstract? Apart from, you know, um, having to include abstract in your thesis or in your paper, because abstract can help you present complex information in a clear, concise manner. Uh, sometimes when you produce a very um, scientific paper, then uh, the abstract would be helpful in helping your future readers to understand your work. Because before they start reading, they need to at least form an understanding of what the content of your thesis is. Uh, helps you read abstracts more effectively. Yes. Okay. Because let's say after you are done with your FYP, you would like to come back to your CM and continue with your master's degree. Then now when you are reading for your literature review, for example, since you know how to write abstract now, then 
now you should be able to read abstract more effectively. You can even evaluate the people's abstract. Okay. Helps you write abstracts for future publications. Okay. Forces of abstract complete. It covers the major parts of the project or the thesis. Concise, no wordiness, no unnecessary information. Clear, it is readable, well organized, not too jargon laden. Jargon laden because sometimes there are too many jargons that you may use that you do not know. It's not suitable for uh, academic writing. For example, a jargon such as uh, one size fits all. Okay, it's a very popular jargon, but it's not suitable for academic writing. So you should not be using that kind of jargon. Cohesive flows smoothly between the parts. Remember, because abstract is concise. So sometimes when you read, uh, sorry, when you write something that is brief, then you need to make sure that, <clears throat> sorry, it flows smoothly. You cannot have a, a, a jumpy idea. You cannot have idea that does not connect uh, uh, one another. Okay. Mm, content. So let's go to content because I still have about like 15 minutes. Uh, the first that you must have is introduction. The one that I highlighted in red. Okay. So what are you supposed to write in the introduction? Define purpose and scope of the study. For example, it can be the question or your research question. So that is introduction. What is the second, uh, I'm sorry. So um, later on, then you will have another section that describe materials and methods use, methodology. Okay, next one, you summarize the results, which is results, or in, in other way, we also call it findings. And finally, state the conclusions and their implications, which is the discussion. And at the end, this is the formula. So um, as long as you remember this formula, then you would be writing a good abstract. I represents introduction, M methodology, R would be results, D would be discussion. So I will now share with you, uh, um, sorry. Oh my goodness. Okay. So writing the parts of an abstract step by step. So just now we have already know the parts. Yes, parts, yeah, introduction, um, introduction, methodology, results and discussion. So let's see how we can write that step by step. So step number one, you write between one or two introduction sentences that explain topic, purpose and research questions. One or two introduction sentences. Because introduction shouldn't be longer. It shouldn't be longer. Yeah. Later on, I will show you uh, to, to, to write. A good introduction between or one or two uh, sentences. Okay. After that, again, write one or two sentences describing your research methods. This may also include the type of data analysis you used. Of course, this is just a suggestion. Sometimes, if you do PhD thesis, uh, PhD study, for example, then you have quite a number of research instruments. Then maybe you will write. Uh, three to four sentences for your research methodology. But what I'm focusing on is for FYP. Yeah? So for uh, final year project, um, um, one or two sentences describing your research methods, uh, including your data analysis will be uh, sufficient. Write one or two sentences describing the results or what we call findings. Okay, And finally, again, one or two sentences containing your conclusions and recommendations. So basically, follow this for FYP, we should have about two, four, six, eight sentences. Okay. And um, um, of course, uh, when we are talking about eight sentences, 
um, I cannot say definitely how many words because it depends on um, sometimes people write simple sentences, sometimes people write complex sentences, sometimes people write you know very complex sentences. So the number of words uh, cannot be kept at a certain number as long as you don't exceed suggested number of words, then you are okay. Okay, um, plus minus depending on own study, yes. Okay, let's see uh, what to include. To put it simple, what the author did, how the author did it, what the author found, what the author concluded. So who's the author? All of you, okay? Uh, now you should be proud to call yourself an author of a thesis, a very important academic achievement. Okay, next one, what not to include? Information not contained in the original work, references to other work, no in-text citation, yeah? No in-text citation is needed. Quotation from the original work or from other, uh, other works. Lengthy explanations about words and concepts. Uh, this is also important. Unexplained acronyms or abbreviations. If you are using acronyms, you have to write in full before you put in the uh, first time, yeah, before you put in the bracket. For example, if you are going to talk about um, blended learning approach, for example, yeah, and you want to, to, to use acronym BLA, but for the first time, you need to spell full and then you put in bracket BLA, BLA, and after that, you can use BLA throughout your abstract. Um, for technical abstract, normally for students from engineering or, or computer science, they use a lot of abbreviations and this normally uh, are not explained in the abstract, then uh, um, that is something that uh, you cannot uh, do or should be uh, avoided. Um, table and figures, of course, shouldn't be in your abstract. Okay, prior to submission, Okay, because of course you will be working on your abstract with your supervisor, but sometimes before you submit even uh, uh, to your supervisor, you should be doing this. Follow the instructions of the formula in right, yeah? Include headings exactly as stated in the instruction, the one that we talked about earlier. Use short, clear sentence. One idea per sentence, yes. If you are a type of person who likes to write simple sentences, then only one idea per, per sentence. Do not have more than one idea, especially if you are writing your abstract in English. Okay, so just concentrate on one idea per sentence. Okay, limit your abstract to the word count. Okay, edit, edit and edit, edit, editing is important. Okay, check grammar especially in English abstracts, syntax. Syntax means a choice of words and uh, punctuation. Okay, uh, I will skip this one because I want to go to, okay, example of abstract. Okay, I have uh, colored coded some of the words. Uh, this abstract is taken from a master's thesis for research. So you can see that uh, they are a little bit longer. It contains 230 words. So if you look at the um, 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 sentences in green, these sentences represent the introduction. Okay, if you look at the first sentence, okay, research showed that the child's awareness of pragmatic development occurs um, at an early age, and this development was manifested when the children participated in conversation with others. This is the short introduction, introductory sentence to your research. Okay, then only the second uh, um, sentence comes in where you talk about aim. Okay, your aim, your research purpose. If you notice, this author did not summarize the research questions or research objectives which is okay because she has put the research aim. So two sentences. And after that, she continued to talk about the 
data collection methods, participants, um, research instruments, research analysis. Okay, earlier I mentioned it should not have in-text citation. So you may be asking me why we have these two, Sir and Heinz. Uh, she put this because she would be uh, analyzing yeah, the, the speech acts according to these theories developed by Sir and Heinz. She was not quoting anybody's work. Um, the sentences in uh, purple are the findings. Okay. And if you look clearly, the last bit, which is written in red, would be the conclusion and also your um, 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 discussion. Okay. So this finding suggested that the children at the age of six were capable of using language in order to convey certain speech acts. And all these are the findings. And this will be the discussion and conclusion. The findings of this study have important implications on children's language learning and provide a guideline on improving teaching activities in preschool classroom that could promote children's language acquisition. So now uh, you should have a general idea of, okay, so the first part is the introduction, going back to the formula that I discussed earlier. Second part is the uh, methodology. Third part in purple is findings. And finally, the part in red is on conclusion and discussion. Okay. So if I were to break down, then this sentence is the introduction sentence. Okay. I, I took down the abstract and I um, 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 put this uh, sentence by sentence. I still have about 10 more minutes. Okay. So this first sentence is the introduction sentence. So the author is basically um, giving the readers, audience or future readers about the context of her research. So if you read uh, uh, clearly, then it is about pragmatic development. of early age okay? and such objectives. I will share that in, the, in my uh, later slide as well. But for this, um, she just mentioned about the general aimed, not the specific research objectives. After that, we have okay, participants of the study. This is already methodology. Yeah? So she mentioned the participants of the studies, and then she mentioned about her data collection instruments. She used video recording, field notes, unstructured interviews. And still under methodology, she mentioned on methods of data analysis. So everything is there, participants, data collection instruments, method of data analysis. Okay, so that is the methodology part. Okay, hang on a bit. Why is my slide not? Okay. Okay, so this is the whole thing is suggest uh, findings. The whole thing is findings. So there are two sentences here talking about the findings from her study. So the findings would be definitely based on the research question earlier. So I'm sure your supervisor uh, knows this uh, um, um, very well. Um, so again, going back to the number of sentences that I wrote earlier. So for, for findings, uh, she wrote in um, two sentences. Okay, and this is the discussion. 
the finding of this study have important implications and so forth. Okay, so this is the discussion and then that's how we write an abstract. Okay, what I'm showing next is this is the original abstract written by a PhD student. And when we uh, look at this, yes, it has all the components, introduction, methodology, finding, and discussion. However, the abstract is too long. If you look at the introduction, you can see there are many, many, many uh, sentences. Okay. Um, and uh, we, as uh, um, proofreaders, before we approve any of the abstract, uh, very fine, then we need to look at all this and we need to make changes to the abstract. So very long abstract, after we have made changes, it becomes shorter. And if you notice, um, the, num the, the sentences for the introduction have been reduced to only three sentences. Earlier, uh, there are more than three sentences. Okay. Um, of course, all this, um, 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 what we did was uh, to help the students to um, write better, better abstract, especially for uh, a thesis. So I would like to, before I take any questions, yeah, my last slide, I think, sample from abstract writing, FYP, sample. This abstract is taken from my student, uh, FYP, uh, last uh, semester. Um, again, um, three sentences he did for introduction, and then two sentences for methodology, three sentences for findings, and two sentences for discussion. So for um, FYP, I think this uh, length of an abstract uh, should be um, suitable uh, depending on the complexity of our uh, abstract. So I think I started at 2.10. I'm finished at 2.40, 30 minutes flat. Uh, <laughs> I, I would like to, um, of course, um, if you have questions, you can also always contact me later. I wish later on, maybe if you have more time for next semester, probably we can do a workshop on this. So thank you, Dr. Sharul. I, I give the session back to you for, for Dr. Fendi to come in. Thank you again, everyone.